one of the things that I did with this book is chronicle the entire making of the Back to the Future trilogy. Not only the making of the film, but also what happened afterwards. It's impossible to see a DeLorean and not think of Back to the Future. It's impossible to hear Huey Lewis and not think of Back to the Future. Uh, it's impossible, frankly, to see Michael J. Fox or Christopher Lloyd or even Robert Zemeckis, who is the director, um, to see his name and not think about these films. I want to share with you a, um, a brief excerpt from We Don't Need Roads. It took Michael J. Fox just less than an hour to hang up the phone, get dressed, leave his house, fly down the highway, and get to NBC Studios in Burbank. He had made the drive to Gary David Goldberg's office dozens of times before, but there was something about the urgency and vagueness of the producer's call that made Fox sure that this was not going to be a usual visit. He arrived feeling as if he'd been called down to the principal's office and worried he had inadvertently done something worthy of reprimand. Goldberg was already behind his desk. He skipped the pleasantries, putting Fox further on edge. The television producer had a lot of respect for his star and shot straight with him. Goldberg told Fox about Back to the Future, how the film's production team had wanted him from the start, and how Goldberg had kept the script from him. While much of this was new information for Fox, the producer was surprised to know the actor was already familiar with the movie and had wanted to be involved since the film's pre-production stages. <laughs> The television producer took the script out of an oversized manila envelope, safely guarded in his desk drawer. Fox took the script and considered its title quizzically. Given the erratic situation surrounding family ties in the summer of 1984, the actor couldn't blame the show's creator for seeking to protect his property. Goldberg asked Fox to read it overnight and report back the next day if he was interested. If so, it would mean working 18-hour days, between both projects, sometimes even longer. Weekends would be dedicated almost entirely to shooting the film, at least until the TV show wrapped for the, seasons, for the season close to four months later. And by the way, he would have to start in two days. The actor grabbed the thick stack of pages and made a makeshift scale out of the palm of his hand, bending his forearm at the elbow to assess the weight. It was much heftier than his sitcom scripts. He got ready to leave his boss's office, but stopped, turned around, and let the producer know a decision had already been made without the script even having been read. Michael J. Fox was in. The future production team had cleared their most important hurdle to date, and now they were going in for the kill. Back to the Future is such a special series of films to me. It was great to be able to speak with these people, and as I gathered these stories, I literally could not wait to share these stories with people. It's great for it to be out. In a lot of ways, I still think of the book as like a Word document on my computer, so the fact that I'm holding something in my hand right now is kind of amazing still. Um, third book, if that feeling doesn't get old. It's an excellent uh, piece, not only of of cultural history, but it's also a, a fun read, I believe. And you'll, even if you're a diehard Back to the Future fan, there's something for you to sort of learn. Thank you guys so much. Thanks.